parenting, teaching, and living life the fun way. Hey, 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 hey. I get carried away sometimes. Anyways, now I'm really excited for this video because it's gonna be a little different than my typical videos. But since I just did a video explaining what is remote learning, I thought it would be very helpful to teach you how to use Zoom for remote learning. And I'm always talking about Zoom. 12 fun Zoom games, kids games on Zoom, five more fun Zoom games. I can keep going with the Zoom games. But I've never really sat down and shown you guys how to actually use Zoom. I'm always talking about use the whiteboard feature and turn on the whiteboard feature. Use the screen share. You will simply screen share, but I've never shown you how to actually use the whiteboard feature or the screen share. And now I think it's about time for me to show you exactly how to use Zoom. Now the first thing you're going to want to do in order to use Zoom is download Zoom. You can do that by simply going to Google, typing in Zoom download, and then downloading the Zoom software. Software. It will then download to your computer and you're going to go ahead and run it so that it may save to your actual hard drive. Now once Zoom is installed to your hard drive, you're able to actually download it and create your Zoom account if you don't already have one. Now do you need an actual Zoom account just to join a meeting? No. So if you're simply joining a meeting, you still have to download Zoom just like we went over. But instead of actually logging into your account, you're just going to click join a meeting and then you're going to type in all the information that was found on your invitation to join the actual Zoom call. So that includes a meeting ID and a password. Some invitations on Zoom come with a simple link. And if you have a link, you just click that link and then you're able to open up that Zoom call. If you join a meeting and the host or the teacher has created a waiting room, then you'll simply just wait until they accept you into the meeting or into the classroom. Now during remote learning, I suggest go ahead and creating your own account. This way, every time you log in, your name automatically pops up and everybody knows who you are. And you can also get counted in for attendance. Now on the teacher side of using an account, they're able to schedule a meeting or just start a meeting. I suggest scheduling all your meetings. This way you could send the information prior to the meeting and everybody can join in on your class. It's important to know that Zoom only gives you 40 free minutes. Now as of the time I'm recording, Zoom has waived their limitation of 40 minutes for all educators. So if you're an educator and you want to use Zoom for remote learning, you'll simply open an account through the Zoom educator platform that simply allows them to know that you're a teacher and you want this to be waived. And you'll use your school email address and they'll make you wait about 48 to 72 hours before they send you a confirmation that your educator account has been created and you're no longer limited to the 40 minute limitation due to the pandemic. Now, when you log into Zoom, you will see four main options. New meeting, join a meeting, schedule a meeting, and screen share. I suggest instead of a new meeting, you always do schedule a meeting. This way your kids know exactly when you want them to get online in advance. Now, of course, you'll enter the date and time. You can also give it a name. So for the title, you can write math block or reading block, whatever block it is. You can simply title that. That way on the kids side, they know exactly which meeting is which and what they will be learning about at that time. Now, some meetings don't include passwords. Most meetings do. Now, I simply do simple passwords. That way nobody gets confused. The repeating option is what allows the whole remote learning to go very successful. So once you have scheduled your reading blocks or math blocks or even science and social studies, you can set it to repeat at the same time each day. If you want to just create one meeting and the kids stay in that same meeting all day long, that's another really easy way to do it. And that way you can schedule them to be in the same meeting every single day for the exact same time. You'll also see that you're able to say if you want to have a waiting room or if you even want to have a password required. The waiting room feature just simply allows you to be able to accept people before they're able to just walk in the room. The benefit of this is if you have to remove a student for inappropriate behavior, they can't just simply join in without your permission. You also have more advanced options such as the host video on, which just means if you want your face to automatically be shown. Hi. If you want the participant video on, so if you want the kids face showing, allow join before a host means you're allowing the kids to hop on before you're able to get on. Now I suggest during remote learning, turn this feature off 
That way kids aren't just in the chat talking about inappropriate things without your supervision. And the last automatically feature you have is the automatic record your meeting. Now I suggest recording all your virtual meetings or lessons and giving parents that video. That way students that aren't able to watch live can always access that video later. Now let's talk about what do you actually do while you're in a Zoom call. If you're entering a Zoom call and you see this pop up, go ahead and click call using internet audio. This way you're able to use the microphone in your Zoom call. Now it's best practice once you have joined and you're using your audio to go ahead and mute yourself because you don't want everybody talking at once and it can be very confusing. But go ahead and turn off your audio by clicking mute and keep on your video so everybody can see your face but they don't get to hear your voice. Y'all remember that saying, children are to be seen and not heard? I think I found a place for it in life. <laughs> Now once you're in a Zoom call, anybody can click participants and they're able to see everybody that's in the Zoom call. You also have access to a chat box that will allow everybody to type and talk to each other. Now Zoom allows two features while in the chat box. There's one feature that allows you to comment and you click everybody and everybody gets to see your comment. If you want to send a comment just to the teacher or to another student, then you simply click their name and then they're able to see a private message of what you're typing. Now you could also spark up remote learning through engagement by using the emojis that allows a child to react to whatever it is that you said. So if you gave them two options like, do you guys want a bathroom break? Use a reaction emoji. And then you see multiple kids using the reaction emoji. One, that means they were paying attention. And two, if they send you the cheer, that means that they want to go to the bathroom. <laughs> now in this video, I went over ways to make remote learning as successful as possible for children. And one of those was to make it feel like they're actually in a classroom. So in Zoom, you also have this feature that allows you to have virtual backgrounds. Do you like me now? How about now? What about now? You could even add your own picture to your background if you want to be extra. I'm extra. So go ahead and be like me. Okay, I can play with virtual backgrounds all day long. The next feature that the host or the classroom teacher is able to have is the share option. Now if you're on your phone, you're able to share things such as screen, photos, your iCloud Drive, Dropbox, OneDrive, Google Drive, a box, a URL or a bookmark. If you're on a desktop, then you're able to see things such as your whiteboard feature or an actual website that you're on. Let's talk about the whiteboard first. The whiteboard feature is probably one of my favorite features on Zoom. You probably could tell in this video because everybody's able to kind of draw at the same time and you're able to play a lot of fun games or you can display notes and kids are able to fill in the blanks. Whatever it is, you simply click share and then whiteboard and everybody will have access to a whiteboard. Now, if you're wanting to share something on your screen, you'll simply click share and then you will show your desktop or actually show a picture or website. This way, all parties get to see exactly what is on your computer and you can kind of walk them through exactly what it is that you want them to learn. Now, it's also important to show you that Zoom has two really cool views. You can see the gallery view that allows you to see all the participants at once and everybody fits in different little boxes. Or you're able to see this view that allows you to see whoever is talking at the time. And this view kind of changes out depending on simply who's talking. Now, if the teacher has to leave the classroom for whatever reason, they will be given two options, leave meeting or end meeting for all. End meeting for all means simply that everybody will hang up and the meeting will simply be over. If you just simply leave a meeting, that means you're kind of like walking out the classroom and leaving all the kids unattended and they can pretty much do whatever they want without adult supervision. So I suggest if you have to leave, go ahead and end the meeting and say, bye y'all, see you later. Now, if you're getting value and you're learning some great things about Zoom, don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell, and join a community of dedicated people to shape in the future to parenting, teaching, and living life the fun way. So let me think. We know how to get into a meeting. We know how to schedule a meeting. 
We know about the chat box, the whiteboard feature, how to share our screen. We know how to use the reaction emojis, leave a meeting. I think I pretty much covered everything. If there's any other questions you have about Zoom, let me know down below in the comments and I will do my part in order for your children to have the best remote learning experience. Don't forget to check this video out next so that you know exactly what remote learning is. And if you already know what remote learning is and you're just ready to have some fun, don't forget to check out this video where I go over 10 really fun games for kids of all ages that they can do during remote learning. See you later!